at the rectification uh, application of diodes. And we explore three circuits, the half-wave rectifier, the simplest ever, and bridge full-wave rectifier, and center tape full-wave rectifier. Okay. And uh, we, and we, we compare between these three techniques or three circuits based on five uh, metrics, uh, the number of diodes, for example, let's, yeah. The number of diodes in the bridge was four, okay. Uh, for center tape, full of the files, the number of, uh, of diodes were two, whatever the transformer ratio. We say that the bridge uh, doesn't need uh, the transformer if the input voltage is, you know, small enough, you can just use it. If you are okay with high voltage, that's fine also. But in center tape, even if you are okay with the input voltage magnitude or a maximum, you still need the center tape. Okay, so the transformer is series a must. And the problem with center tape transformer is that they are bulky. They even bulkier than the normal uh, uh, transformer uh, transformers without center tape. Okay, the maximum output in both is different. In 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 bridge rectifier, it's V maximum minus one point four. In center tape, it needs uh, the transformer information, whether it's one foot to one or one to two, okay? So for one to one, it's Vmax over two minus 0 0.7. So that, that means you have decreased 50% of the, of the power, which is, which is bad, of course, okay? And that's why we, to compare, to make it a fair comparison, we, make, we need to make the, the transformer ratio in center tape one to two. And in that case, the the maximum will be v max the maximum output will be max input minus 0 0.7 okay and that's not uh, far from v max minus 1.4 okay especially because v max usually is very high okay but in that case you will need a bulkier transformer the dc uh, output in bridge to v max over by in center table in one to one, it's Vmax over by one to two, it's two Vmax over by. And we say that they are approximately equal, but again, the center tape needs a uh, higher uh, transformer ratio or barcal transformer or more expensive, okay? And we also, the last metric was the big inverse voltage, which is the maximum reverse voltage is that any reverse diode can see while operation or while operating this circuit. And again, based on the transformer ratio in center table, it was my two V max minus 0 0.7. So as I mentioned, Than a, 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 an earlier idea than the bridge. That's a possibility why they're still teaching it. But there is also another advantage in center tape that this idea of you know having positive and negative voltage at the same time. Okay, actually this is I this is the advantage or the merit or the, the main characteristic of behind the using center tape. So in my, in some applications, and actually there is an application for this that you may need uh, both positive and negative outputs, okay? Okay, let's now, you know, uh, try to enhance more these circuits, okay? So in half-wave rectifier, in normal half-wave rectifier, let's, you know, I uh, need, okay, let's go back to the recap, yes. So we will explore first the, the problem that we have so far with such circuits and how we can improve more. So basically in half wave rectifier, we have this diode and this is the load, our load. 
Okay, and this is the inputs that we need to transform into IDC. And if the input is like this, okay, we discovered that the output, let's, let's assume this is ideal diode, just to simplify stuff. So the output was like this. Then zero, then again the same output, the same input, I'm sorry. So you pass exactly the most of, the most of half of the, of the input voltage, you cut the negative half, you pass again the most of half, and so on. Okay, we said that this output, so Vn, Vn. This output here has, you know, uh, same polarity every time. Always this node here is larger than this node in the magnitude, in, in voltage. Rather, the input, the situation is reversed each half cycle. So in the positive half cycle, this node has more voltage than the lower mode, no, mode, uh, node here. The negative half cycle, this node has lower volt, voltage than uh, this node here. So in the positive half, this is the polarity, in the negative half, this is the polarity of the voltage. But for output, it's always like this. And we say that this is one of the characteristics of a DC, that you have same polarity each time, or all times. But the other characteristic of a DC is not there. Because we still have, you know, a fluctuations. So very clear here that the, the output is not, you know, has no constant value. We know that DC should have a constant value, something like this. But this is not our case here. We there is still fluctuations or variations. So in this lecture, we're going to improve upon that. We're going to improve the half wave rectifier and also the full wave. Because the full wave still have the same problem as well. So in the whole full wave, for example, the bridge, which is something like this. The output, in terms of efficiency, it increases. Because now the negative half cycle is also inverted and the bus to the output. So the output is always positive. But again, there is still fluctuations. So how we can improve upon that? And the idea, you know, is not that simple, but the circuit is simple, is to use a capacitor which we call uh, capacitor filter or a smoothing capacitor. So let's see how to analyze such circuit and how the circuit will help us to improve our previous, you know, uh, result with half wave rectifier uh, and full wave rectifier the circuit that we just saw, that has no capacitors, only diodes and the load. Okay. Okay. So let's see how to analyze the circuit and how we, we drive VO in, in this case. Okay. So let's assume, let's assume that there was, you know, a kind of switch here. Okay. You know, guys, that Q equal to CV. So V equal to Q over C. This is the charge stored on capacitor plates. Uh, capacitance itself. And this is the voltage cross 
זה קבסטו. So no charge, no voltage. So let's assume that at t equal to zero, this guy was, was off, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it was open, the switch was open. So the capacitor has no charge. So at t equal to zero, this is a, a you know, a convenient assumption. At t equal to zero, uh, the initial condition we can say, no charge on the capacitor. So VO is equal to zero. Because VO is equal to VC. VO, the voltage the, of the output, is equal, uh, equal to the voltage across the capacitor, VC. And then at equal to zero, we just, you know, close this switch. So at that time here, VO, so we'll draw VO and VN at the same uh, on the same graph to make it more, you know, uh, convenient for you or easier for you to understand. So we will also draw VO here, but with another color, which is uh, blue color. So at e T equal to zero, we, we close this switch, okay? We have here zero, and this guy in here, the VM, but this node here, because this is zero, will start to increase in voltage. The diode needs 0.7 to uh, to work, okay, or to be on, okay? Basically, this node is zero, and this node is increasing, so the diode will be forward. But it needs 0.7 to work, okay? So, if the input, so let's start with the voltage half cycle. Uh, less than 0.7 diode is off. So the current is zero. And if the current is zero, the capacitor will not charge. There will be no charge on the capacitor blades. Because basically the charge came from out of a current that goes through the capacitor. So in that in that case here, since ID equal to zero, so V C will be equal to zero because there is no charge. because there is no current. So VO is equal to zero as well. Now, what if the input become larger than or equal to 0.7? Basically the diode would turn on. So there will be current and VD will be equal to 0.7. So if we make Kirchhoff here, we will find that VO is equal to VN minus 0.7. Let's draw that. So let's assume here is the point seven, for example. 
So in that little little short period here, the input was less than 0.7. So the capacitor is a, the diode was off. So the circuit was something like this. And the O was zero, was just zero. So zero here. Then at that point, the, the input will start to grow further or greater than 0.7. So VO will be equal to, or VC will be equal to the input minus 0.7. So just tracking the same input. Until we reach T over two here. T over, I'm sorry, T over, this is T over two, this is T over eight. Or T over four, T, I'm sorry, T over four, T over four, yeah. So basically each point here is the same input, but minus 0.7. So for example, this is Vmax, this is Vmax minus 0.7. Now the tricky part. What will happen after T over four? When V input start to decrease again, okay? Remember the diode condition here is based on two, Terminals, one connected to V input, this terminal is connected to V input, and this terminal is connected to the capacitor, which has a charge and voltage now, because VO is equal to VC. So the condition of the diode, okay, after this point in here, after this particular point, will determine, will determine VO. Of course, based, will determine the diode condition, and that condition will determine VO. The capacitor has three, you know, in the circuit has three states. Either charging, discharging, or not charging or discharging. Like for example, uh, in that case, in that short period, there was open circuit here, so the capacitor was uh, neither charging nor discharging. So the, the voltage of the capacitor was constant. If the capacitor is charging, its voltage will increase. If the capacitor is discharging, the voltage will decrease. So let's see here. What's happening after this point? So after this point, the input itself start to uh, decrease, okay? It will be less than Vmax minus 0.7. For a capacitor to, char to charge, the charge must come from an input or a source that has a voltage la larger than the voltage of the capacitor. Okay, so for a capacitor, so after let's let's write this down here. Now, at T equal to this lasts until T equal to T over four until time equal to T over four, and T is the period of the cycle of the of the input wave. Now at T equal to T over four, the input will you know become less than Vmax minus 0.7, which is Vc right now. The capacitor voltage at T equal to T over four. So the first possibility there are three possibilities. Number one, let's explore them one by one. Capacitor is charging. 
what does this require? This requires number one, and a source, an input, a voltage source that has voltage greater than VC. Is that correct? In our example here, no. So this is not possible in our case. This is not possible after t equal to t over four. And why is that? Because v input after t equal to t over four is less than v max minus point uh, minus point seven yes which is vc as simple as that and after some you know some time we will check on that and prove it again using some other conditions that i i will not that i didn't mention so far okay so this is the first probability for vc what is the second probability or the second possible you know situation number two capacitor is discharging of course in that case vc should increase in that case vc shouldn't decrease because it's it's uh, it discharge is a charge so when q is decreasing vc will decrease as well as i as i show you in the beginning of this you know in that Bottom. Okay, so let's see if this is also possible or not. Okay, when a capacitor is charging, basically, if the current is going through charging, so this is the charging. If the charging was uh, with a current like this, so the capacitor will charge and it will, it will have a voltage like this. This is during the charging. For this charging, we have another situation and VC is increasing. Okay. As long as there is a, there is, there is a, a current flow in that direction. Now, uh, when this is charging, we will have a situation like this. And this is I larger than zero. There, there must be a current for, for, for charging to happen. Now for this charging, so after charging this guy, for some reason, the capacitor now won't to this charge, it's, uh, it's, it's a charge. The stored charge on its plates, in very simple terms. While this charging, we still have positive and negative. I mean, same polarity as the charging. If positive is here and negative is here, we will have positive is here and negative is here. If it's opposite, I mean, positive was down and the negative was up, we will have positive is down and negative was up. So this is VC, but now VC will be decreasing. So here, here is incrementing or, or you know, increasing in other terms. Here is decreasing. But same polarity. And the current should be in that way and positive. The opposite current. So this is a charging current. This is discharging current. A positive. Now let's examine our circuit and see if this is possible or not. So for our capacitor, while it was a charging, it was a charging through a current that flows through a diode in that way here. And this is a positive, of course, positive uh, current. And this was the positive, and this was the negative of the capacitor. Now, if the capacitor wound to this charge, it will discharge in that direction. But now let's ask ourselves a question. Can a diode have a current flow in that direction from N to B? 
someone should answer me from you please can we have a diode that permits a current flow from its n to its b and this is a positive current any answer yes troy thank you so basically if we ignore uh, you know the breakdown for now so this is not possible okay so ah, by the way even in breakdown the current would, would be negative okay so oh yeah yeah would be positive in that direction yes yes that's right yeah but anyway here is we ignore the we ignore the, the breakdown but this is a valid point because yeah Maybe for such circuit, there, there may be a breakdown, and that's a valid point. Okay, and we will come to that after a while. But anyway, so now for this circuit here, for this capacitor to discharge its current, uh, it must dispose or you know push the charge in this green direction and which would be a positive current and it should pass from n to b which is not possible so the, the second possibility is also not possible so this is not possible like the first one Because the diode cannot permit or allow a positive current from its in uh, terminal to be terminal, which is the discharge positive current of the capacitor and as we learn it guys with the diode the diode in a circuit either on or off there is no third choice the same for the capacitor this is charging it's charging or neither and in that case the current is zero so basically the correct assumption here let's go to another uh, or the correct possibility. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot. Yeah. Yes. Let's. Oh, we have one here. Good. I just try to continue here. Okay. For the third possibility, neither charging or discharging, which means that i is equal to zero i is that flows through the current i see i i capacitor okay uh, which we call i charge or i discharge so there is no current flows into this capacitor after so after since the capacitor as proved earlier in one and two is not a charging or discharging so it will keep its charge after t equal to t over four between two brackets forever in that circuit once the capacitor charge or voltage reaches v max minus 0.7 it will keep that charge forever okay 
So let's draw that and try to you know elaborate more and check more on what I just said or explain it to you. So let's go and, and draw that. I'm saying that, well, let's do that again here, I'm sorry. Yeah, so if Q will be constant forever after T equal to T over four, so VC will be V max minus 0.7 forever as well after T equal to T over four. So let's draw that here. After T equal to T over four, VC or VO, because they are equal, will be constant equal to V max minus 0.7. Which is truly nice. Remember, we, we analyze this circuit because I promise you in the beginning that we want to improve upon the half wave rectifier that we have. The half wave rectifier, positive zero, positive zero, and so on. This guy can give us a DC. This is, if we ignore, you know, that, that part here, I know that you are concerned about this part because it's still, uh, there is a change. But this is called the transient. The, this you have a slope in the beginning is called the transient state. So this is the, the steady state, which means uh, forever <laughs> or for t equal to infinity, is that one, which is a dc equal to v max minus 0.7 or minus vd on, whatever the diode is. Some diodes uh, operate or become on at 0.3, by the way. Okay, so this will be v max minus 0.3, whatever. And this is actually DC. So this is the steady state here. So our steady state is actually DC. Which what exactly, which would, which what, what exactly we want in our applications or the rectifier applications. Now we will look at the, you know, the analysis that we just did based on viewing the capacitor states, it charging, this is charging, and we prove in both that is incorrect. So the, there is no other possibility than the, than the third one. So the third one must be true, and it is true. We will look at the same situation based on the diet, okay? When I say that the capacitor is not charging or this is charging, I said that I see the capacitor current is zero. And that means the diode is off. So let's look at another way of, uh, of analyzing or looking at this circuit. If we said that the capacitor is uh, not charging or this is charging and I see is equal to zero, that means that the, the diode is off after t equal to t over four, or for, we can say this more mathematically, for t larger than or equal to t over four. And let's check on that. So let's have some checks about the diode conditions after T equal to T over four, or for T larger than or greater than T over four. Okay, so let's let's pick some some points and do that. Ah, that's not the picture. Let's you know check that for example uh, here. Let's assume this is for example V max over two. And let's check here at V, so the VM motor is equal to V max over two. Oh, we will prove that the diode was really off at V max at uh, VM equal to V max over two. any points, you know, just check for you. Here is VM input is equal to zero. Let's also check here at VM input equal to uh, VM input equal to minus V max. Uh, here is, you know, staying. And uh, let's check here at VM equal to V max again, because this is a periodic circuit, a periodic signal. Okay, so all the points will repeat again and again 
each each t cycle or each I'm sorry each t uh, time or each cycle. Okay, so we'll prove now at all these points and it and at any point after t equal to t over four the die resolve. So let's for example number one at v n equal to uh, v max over two. So let's draw the circuit at that at that condition. Let's go back here. So at v mod equal to v max over two, we said that the die the capacitor is not charging or discharging. Okay. And if you have a capacitor with that state that is not a charging, this is a charging, you can just replace this in the analysis with 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 a battery. So the capacitor will be just like a battery here. With uh, how much? With voltage equal to V max minus 0.7. Wow, we have now uh, a diode in a circuit with two batteries. We need to know if it's forward or reverse that's fine all these guys on in series so just to combine the batteries together so you have here the max over two this guy can go backward like this it will be something uh, like this if it goes backward v max minus 0.7 so this will be one battery we can say, and it has uh, V max over two minus V max minus 0 0.7. If we guys neglect the 0 0.7, this should be positive or negative. So if we say that V max is much, much larger than 0 0.7, this term here should be a positive or negative. If I neglect the point seven, it will be something like this. This is positive or negative. Arsene, you still, <laughs> you still think it's positive? Arsene, you? Yeah, yes, negative. Okay, because if we neglect uh, the point seven, thank you for getting the. Okay, it will be Vmax. Three, thank you. Okay, it will be Vmax over two minus. Minus V max, which is of course a negative because this is minus half V max. Okay, so this is minus half V max approximately, of course, which is reverse. That's not forward. So the die is off. And that's why there is no charging or discharging. So that's off. So the current is zero. Let's check again at. Vn equal to, uh, we said, uh, yeah, zero. We start with Vmax over two, then zero, then minus Vmax. And Vm is equal to zero. Actually, we will have this, this stuff again here. But is in, in, uh, in, uh, with easier case, we can say. Because this now is zero, not Vmax over two. And this guy is still v min, uh, Vmax minus 0.7. So this can be reduced to something like this. A battery with minus Vmax plus 0.7. Again, if we, as a magnitude, neglect, if we say that as a magnitude, Vmax is much, much larger than 0.7. Is this a positive or negative? This will be negative minus Vmax. So again, the value is reverse and the current is zero. It's off. So there is no charging or discharging. Third case, at Vn equal to minus Vmax. That's maybe the easiest way, the easiest one. So here we have this guy minus Vmax, then the other battery, which is a capacitor actually, with minus Vmax, minus 0.7. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So this would be. Oh, I am very sorry. This is positive Vmax. I'm very sorry. Yeah, yeah the capacitor has a positive Vmax minus 0.7. We've come in like in that way, it's still Vmax minus 0.7. So this would be 
a battery with minus 2 V max plus 0.7. Again, if we V max is much, much larger than this guy, so this circuit would be minus 2 V max, which is negative. Again, this guy is reverse. So it's off, and the current is zero, and there is no charging with this charge. Now, this point, when Vm would be equal to Vmax, let's see what's happening out there. We will have something like this. This guy is positive Vmax. This guy is Vmax minus 0.7. So if we subtract, it will be something like this. A battery of a 0.7 connected to a diode. So it will, you know, it will just turn it on for one moment. One moment in time. T equal to uh, actually T capital because this is one period or I'm sorry T plus T over 4 one moment and we know that if the diode has according to constant voltage model if the diode has a voltage of V7 actually it's working in that point in here so still ID equal to 0 So basically what's happening, or what I want to say in here, is that at this point, the diode is off. It's reversed, actually. Reversed, 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 and off. Reversed and off. Reversed off. Reversed off. Reversed off. Reversed off. Reversed off. Reversed off. Until some point, it will become forward. Okay? And then continue forward, but off. Continue forward, but off. Until here, it will be, it will have forward and positive point seven, but still the current, the current is zero, but then it will go to a reverse again. So from this point forward, the diode is off. It's either reverse or forward, but in this region. In this region here, just before the point seven. Okay, guys. So this is basically, you know, the foundation of how to use a capacitor filter. After T over four, the capacitor will just, you know, uh, stop it charging or discharging. It will keep its charge forever, VO will be equal to Vmax minus 0.7 forever. Okay, so let's now apply that to our half-wave rectifier. Remember, a half-wave rectifier is an, is an application circuit. I mean, it you should have a load. So you have, so this, I'm sorry. The half-wave rectifier should be connected to a load, some load. So in real life, you have a, you have this the input which is AC, and you have a load, some load RL. So we connect in between the rectifier, either half wave or full wave, so that this guy, this load can see both of uh, DC voltage. Either positive or negative, by the way. There is half wave rectifier, like what we say, uh, like what like what we see so last uh, last lecture. The negative half wave rectifier. You may need minus DC. That's fine. So you have a load. Okay, in the general case, you don't have a capacitor as a load. You have a resistor as a load. Okay. 
So there should be some load, some resistive load like this, connected to our capacitor in parallel to it. So again, uh, we'll assume there is a kind of switch in here. Okay. And at t equal to zero, switch uh, before t equal to zero, you know, <laughs> this switch was open. So no charge on the capacitor. So VO, which is VC actually, is equal to zero. Then we close the switch at t equal to zero. Then we close the switch. Okay, so the diode here has a zero voltage in that terminal, on that terminal. And this guy actually will start increasing. But the diode needs a point seven. So we can say here, most of our cycle, let's say that. For the input less than 0.7, that is off. No charging. So VC, VO is equal to zero. Because ID is equal to zero, basically. And basically VD is equal to V input. If you make Kirchhoff, you will find such thing. Now, second case for Vn larger than 0.7. The diode will be on. Id larger than zero. So the capacitor will charge now. And VD is equal to 0.7 because that is on. So VN, VC, or V output will be VN minus 0.7. Let's draw that. So assume this is the 0.7. For that small region here, dives off VC equal to zero or V out equal to zero. After that point, the input will, it, will go beyond 0.7, dive zone, capacitor will charge. And VO is equal to V uh, in minus 0.7. So basically, each point here is actually each point here minus 0.7. So for example, this is V max, this guy is V max minus 0.7. Or VD on in general. And this is T over four. Quarter of one period. Now again, what's gonna happen after T over four? So let's see the situation. Again, the capacitor is either a charging, increasing in voltage, this is charging, decreasing in voltage, or neither. In the previous case, when there is no output here, when there, I'm sorry, when there is no load, we can say resistive load, okay? We said that the capacitor cannot 
a charge because it needs an input that has larger voltage than the capacitor, which is not the case. It cannot discharge because in the previous case, there is no load here, so no current can flow in that direction. And the, the only valid case is that there is no charging or discharging. It will keep the voltage forever. But here the case is different. Let's see, let's see how. So basically, we have again three cases. Number two, after or four, There are possibilities, of three possibilities now. Number one, charging. Again, this is not possible. Because the input voltage is less than, will become less than Vmax minus 0.7, which is Vc. I will flip the possibilities now. The second possibility, which is again wrong, is constant, no charge. No discharge. Or no discharge. Uh, let's now revise or review our circuit. In that case, here we have a capacitor, uh, like we have a, a load, a resistive load in the output. So the discharge current will be in that direction. Upward. We said that it cannot go in that way because this guy here, this diode, would prevent that. But how about this direction? Why not? This is a very, very valid direction for discharging. So since there is a resistive load and any resistor can have a current flowing upward or downward left right right left whatever the capacitor can discharge in that way or throw the load So this is not correct. This is also not correct. So the third option, which is this is charging, is the only valid one. And it will be through the resistor load R. Okay, now things become much complicated. Because if there, is a, if there is a discharge, that means the voltage VC will decrease for sure. Now let's revise or review how capacitors behave while discharging. So if you have 
in a load in uh, in, a, in a resistor of course if you have a capacitor is charging in a in a resistor like this so there is basically an equation that controls this discharge so vc of t versus t is actually something like this it's an exponential decay which means the capacitor will will lose its charge in an exponential decay very fast loss of charges okay or exponential loss of charges and actually the equation is for this this charge equation is that vc over t equal to this is let's call this vc of of zero and t equal to zero e exponential minus t over tau and what's tau tau is actually r multiplied by it's just a constant it's called the time constant okay you guys aware of that you have some idea about that before good so let's apply that to our case What's VC of zero? VC of zero is equal to V max minus 0.7. We said that this charge will happen at that or will take place at that point. At that point, the voltage on the capacitor is V max minus, uh, minus 0.7. This is now our T zero. Okay, we will consider this as our T0 now. So the voltage at that at the instant of the discharge is equal to V max minus 0.6. And that was RC, the value of the capacitance multiplied by the value of the resistance. And it's very complicated to continue in that way with that equation. So we will have some assumptions. We will assume some assumptions. The first assumption is that number one the decay is slow it's a slow decay okay now let's ask ourselves a question can this value r here or this value c here controls the the, the rate of decay yes if you try to draw such such equation here at, at different values of r and c you will find that if you increase tau this guy will be like this so for if this is tau one for example this is tau two tau two 
is larger than tau one. If you decrease it to be something like this, tau three, tau three is less than tau one. That means we should use large capacitance. That's the problem number one, by the way, because we want a slow decay. And I will show you why we want a slow decay in a moment. And that needs us either the load to be high, which, which you cannot control. You have an application, some application that needs a DC and the input voltage of that circuit, whatever. It may be large and you're lucky, but it may, it may be small and you're not lucky. If it's a small, you need to put a large capacitor in the rectification circuit. And large capacitor is more expensive and bulky. They, they are huge in size. But why we need a, a, a slow decay? Let's see why we need that. So let's go back here. Remember, the half of rectification circuit has an output like this. I would draw the half of rectification output right now. Is something like this. If you have a slow decay, so at that point the capacitor will discharge. If it's a, if it has a, a very fast decay, it will decay like something like this. then it will charge again here slow decay you know it's still half of rectifier not much it change if it has a slower it will be might be something like this which is you know better if it has more slower it will be something like this For this, for this, if the load is infinity, I mean it's open circuit, like the first one we saw last slide, it will be something like this. You guys are getting this? So basically what's, what's gonna happen is that once the capacitor you know lose its all its charge it will continue zero until the voltage input becomes positive again at point seven it will this it will it will charge then loses its charge okay and so on so if we decrease the rate of of the digital charging you see this negative stuff become positive if we if we decrease or slow more the output of the discharging rate will be something like this something like this if you have if you are very lucky and your load is just an infinite or very large value you will have a something like this which is exactly the same output as this circuit here which have basically an open which has no load, the load is, is infinite, open circuit. Okay. So that's why we need uh, to have such assumption that the, the decay is low. And for this to happen, T capital must be much smaller than tau, which is RC. So the period of the or the yeah the period of the of the input signal much be much 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 uh, must be much less than tau RC. Okay. The second assumption that we must have the decay lasts. 
approximately until t or for t. for t time let's go here and see why it's, it lasts for approximately t time so let's take for example this one the red one at this at this point the capacitor will charge again so it discharge from that point here until that point this was the discharge time. Let's call it T this. Now, what is the time between that point and, and that point? This is T, right? Because this is T over four. This is T plus T over four. So the difference here, which, which, which we can call delta T, so T minus T this is actually equal to T, delta T. And remember, we need the, we need slow decay, right? So it's, it's a requirement for us to make this delta T very small. This should be very small to have a slow decay. We actually want the decay to be just flat. It will be completely DC. So if delta T is approximately equal to, to, to zero, so T discharge is approximately equal to T. So if we go back here to this assumption, the decay losses for T time, that means T discharge approximately equal to t okay so we're gonna stop at this second assumption and you know next time next uh, tomorrow by the way tomorrow uh, before again the lab the lab will be for one hour or one half, one and a half hour and we will take one hour lecture in the beginning so we we'll continue from that point here